Eyes in the dark, just watching me, just waiting to see what I do, where I go and who I talk to, watching me from a distance, but I don't know who. These haunting words were written by a 17-year-old indigenous girl who went for a night out with friends in Canada's capital city of Ottawa, Ontario in May 2002. Sometime during the night, she met an older man who offered to walk her to the bus stop in the early hours of the morning. However, just hours later, the teen's body would be found in a nearby creek, having been murdered in cold blood. Elena Assam Thunderbird was born and raised in Ottawa, Ontario by her mother, Annie Thunderbird. Growing up, Elena didn't have the easiest of childhoods, but by her mid-teens, she started turning her life around and began concentrating on her future, working hard to achieve her goals. Elena was described by her family and friends as being a vibrant and very creative young woman who loved animals. She excelled in creative writing, spending most of her time working on newspaper and magazine projects, as well as her own poetry. Elena had enrolled in correspondence courses at a local youth services centre located in Besserer Street, something which she adored. She signed up for Operation Go Home, a programme which aimed to help youths living on the streets in Ottawa reunite with their families. Shortly after turning 16 years old, Elena moved out of her family residence and moved into a small apartment in Vanier, Ottawa, alongside her pet cat and hamster. Despite living away from home, Elena made sure to visit her mother, Annie Thunderbird, every Wednesday without fail. The two were more than just mother and daughter. They were best friends. Elena had a good group of friends around her too, and always tried to see the best in everyone she met. She was very trusting of people, even those she barely knew. However, one man would go on to abuse this trust in the most horrific way. On Friday, May 31st, 2002, Elena, alongside one of her closest friends, Matuna Arninak, went to hang out together and drink alcohol in Primrose Park, just north of Ottawa's Chinatown district. And it was during this time, at approximately 1.30am, that the pair struck up conversations with a 21-year-old man named Ben Hawkins and an acquaintance of his. 26-year-old Barry Thurston James, who Hawkins had only met for the first time earlier that same day whilst helping a mutual friend move home. The two men had spent the day drinking beer and smoking marijuana together before hitting the bars that night to continue drinking. The two men stayed with Elena and Matuna in the park for a short while, where they drank another beer each, with Hawkins reaching a final drinking total for the day of 25 beers, with James drinking approximately 15 bottles. According to Hawkins, James appeared to be a little drunk that night, but was able to speak without slurring his words. At approximately 2am, the group of friends went their separate ways. When Matuna and Ben were initially thinking about leaving the park together, Barry James offered to walk 17-year-old Elena Assam Thunderbird to the bus stop near to Le Breton Flats, and she accepted. However, this was the very last time that Elena was seen alive. 
On Saturday the 1st of June 2002, two kayakers were paddling along the Ottawa River when they were met with a bloody scene at the edge of a downstream creek near to the Le Breton Flats camping ground, a short distance away from the Fleet Street pumping station. The vast amount of blood present at the scene startled the two kayakers, and as a result, they did not hesitate in contacting authorities. Ottawa police promptly arrived at the scene and immediately discovered Elena's blood-stained clothes, her blood-soaked backpack and her ID strewn across the banks of the river. The amount of blood present at the scene was harrowing. Authorities then sent in police divers to search the river, as there was no sign of Elena, and after scouring the water for around nine hours, the 17-year-old's body was found a short distance further downstream, stuck in a drainage tunnel near to the mouth of the river. She was naked from the waist down. An autopsy was conducted and the medical examiner concluded that Elena had been repeatedly beaten over the head with a blunt object, possibly a rock, before being sexually assaulted and thrown into the creek. Despite the horrific extent of her injuries, Elena ultimately died as a result of drowning and not from the severe injuries inflicted on her body. Police believed that Elena was walking down a dark road leading towards the bus stop before being attacked in an obscured copse of trees near to the Ottawa River. Her body was then dumped in the water before her killer fled the scene without attempting to cover up their crime. It should be noted, however, that according to various news outlets, the autopsy found no traces of semen on Elena's body and she was not sexually active. It was believed that the perpetrator was either sexually assaulting or attempting to sexually assault the 17-year-old at the time they so cruelly stole her life away. Investigators managed to find traces of blood near a bench within close proximity to the river, as well as pools of blood smeared on a path nearby and on some rocks. And after testing was conducted, authorities were able to confirm that most of the blood present at the scene belonged to Elena Assam Thunderbird. However, some droplets found on the rocks belonged to an unidentified identified male, Elena's killer. Police also found Elena's underwear near to the bench, her bra torn. The crime was described by the Ottawa Citizen as a vicious attack and police appealed through various media outlets for any witnesses to come forward to help bring Elena's killer to justice. The hunt was on to find Elena's murderer, and fortunately in this case, it didn't take authorities long to find them. After conducting various inquiries, Elena's friends were able to identify the man last seen with their friend as 26-year-old Barry Thurston James. Late on Sunday evening, police managed to track down the suspect at his mother's address in Bayshore Drive, where he did not resist arrest. Barry, interestingly, did show several bruises and scratches across his face when he was arrested, including a black eye, as well as several cuts and gashes on his arms and legs. This suggested that Elena had tried to fend off her attacker. James was initially uncooperative with detectives when questioned in regards to Elena's murder, exercising his right to silence. Upon inspecting the Bayshore Drive residence where Barry James lived and nearby bins, authorities found a jacket, a shirt and a pair of trousers belonging to the suspect, all of which had traces of his and Elena's blood on them. 
the perpetrator who had committed this heinous crime had been caught. Following his arrest, Barry James was charged with first-degree murder and aggravated sexual assault of 17-year-old Elena Assam Thunderbird and was brought to trial in June 2004, with the trial itself lasting around two weeks. Despite the heart-wrenching pain she was still feeling following the loss of her daughter, Elena's mother, Annie, attended the trial, desperate to know what happened the night her daughter was killed. But more importantly, Annie wanted to see justice served for Elena. Barry Thurston James openly admitted to the court to causing the injuries inflicted on the teen, but pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter instead. However, the Crown rejected this plea. Ben Hawkins, the other man who was with the teens that night, testified at James's trial and recounted what happened on the night of May 31st. Whilst doing so, Hawkins told the court about a phone call he had had with Barry James on June 2nd, 2002, the day after Elena's body was found with James asking Hawkins over the phone to tell police that he didn't know him. Upon Hawkins questioning James regarding what happened when he and Elena left Primrose Park together, James claimed that he went straight home. However, this was not the case. Another witness testified at the trial, a 37-year-old camper who claimed to have heard screams on the night in question at approximately 2.30am whilst sleeping in his tent at the campground near to Fleet Creek. He claimed to have heard a female voice crying out for help, yelling, get off or something similar. The evidence and witness testimonies were damning, especially when another witness took to the stand, a woman who Barry James was previously convicted of beating, assaulting, threatening to kill and raping at knife point in 1995. The fact that James had carried out a similar attack in the past likely weighed heavily on the jury's minds. James was certainly capable of carrying out the same attack again on Elena, the only difference being that the other victim claimed that she didn't fight back, whereas Elena did. This witness believed that because Elena fought back, she lost her life. On the 17th of June 2004, after 10 hours of deliberations, the jury found Barry Thurston James guilty of first-degree murder and aggravated assault, and as a result, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for at least 25 years, as per Canadian law. Following the guilty verdict, Annie Thunderbird yelled out, quote, Thank you very much. Justice had been served for her daughter. In an article published in the Ottawa Citizen newspaper the day following Barry James's conviction, Annie Thunderbird was quoted as saying, Since the loss of my daughter, my life is not the same, and it will never be. She was my life. I just hate that she is gone. My life is life hell. During the trial, Annie was granted permission to talk to her daughter's killer face to face. James said, quote, Mrs. Thunderbird, I thought about the right words to say and the right feelings to say it with, and there's nothing that I can do or say. There's no amount of time that the judge can give me that would bring your daughter back. And for this, I'm truly, truly regretful and sorry for what I did to your life. Annie replied to her daughter's killer, simply stating, You wrecked my life. 
Elena Assam Thunderbird has most certainly not been forgotten by those who loved her the most, with many still remembering her at various vigils and marches for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Elena's memory has been cherished by her friends and her family, who remember her as a bright and caring young woman who had a bright future ahead of her. Two of Elena's poems were recited in a play called Nightmare Days and Stitched Up Nights, which was performed at the National Arts Centre in September 2003 by a number of local youths who faced their own struggles in life. The play focused mainly on the tough street life in Ottawa, poverty, drugs and sexual abuse. And although Elena is not mentioned by name, her murder played a huge part in the play's origins. Youths were angered and terrified about what happened to Elena and struggled to find their own voices, but through this creative outlet, they finally managed to express their feelings about Elena's death in a way in which she herself would have definitely approved of. The play was seen as a tribute to Elena's short but cherished life. Elena Assam Thunderbird's murder is one of very few Indigenous cases in Canada which has been solved, with the killer having been brought to justice. The vast majority of these cases involving missing or murdered Indigenous women are either put aside, forgotten about, or are simply ignored, something which is completely unacceptable and needs to change.